Okay, let's continue with the OS dev. I kind of want to get a read syscall going as well as probably try to get the uh, get the programs that <laughs> we've had forever, like the calculator and editor, working again because they kind of broke with the new file system and system calls and everything. So I kind of want to get that working again, see if we can read some files again, like just basic text files if we write to them, like in the write test at the end of the last video. So yeah, I'll try to get to that. That's mostly what I have on, on this, I believe. These... So this person is a, a YouTube watcher. I don't know how to pronounce your name, so I'm not going to try to. I'll just say a major, I guess, or Mayhair. So, yeah, they, they asked how to run the editor. I was like, well, we, we can't run the editor yet, so that would be something to get accomplished, as well as fixing some graphics modes for lower bits per pixel values. That's broken currently, but I have a good fix in mind for that. So I'll try to do that and remove the printf line because we don't need that anymore because it works. <laughs> Other than that, a couple new things here. Really just one thing, I just moved to where we're getting the size from uh, the syscalls thing. That didn't explain anything. So the file offset where I'm allocating a new block maybe when we're doing right. So I already calculate the size like right below when we're getting the new size anyway. So I figure I did not need to do that stuff here. I can just do that below so we don't have to calculate the size again. We can just do that down here. That's all this is doing. If the offset is greater than the size in bytes, we've written beyond the end of the file, so I'm just setting the new end of the file for the size in bytes matching the offset, and then getting the bytes in sectors. We'll update that inode on disk, and hopefully that's all good. So nothing should be different. You know, we're all good, it all works. We have the size updated correctly for the write test file because we wrote the hello world string to that. So ideally in this part, in this video, I'd like to be able to read this file Maybe put it behind a, a cat or a type command and read the text back and print it to screen, right? I think that would be a decent little test and thing for a read syscall. One other very small thing I noticed was I'm not using this because I don't have the old file table in play anymore. So I'm just going to remove the add file table entry shell script that we're not using. And everything still works because I'm not using it anymore. So one less file, right? That's good. <laughs> let's go and see if we can add like a read syscall so it should be in syscall numbers I do have read right there so that is all good and in the wrapper functions for the syscalls I don't I do have write here open close read and write I think makes more sense uh, in my mind as an ordering so I'll do that I'll just move right down I'm going to put read right above it this will be read, it'll take in, I should make these constant as well. They don't need to be potentially mutable. We'll take in a file descriptor, a signed integer file descriptor, a void pointer for a buffer of memory that we're going to read into, and a length for the amount of data we want to read in bytes into that buffer. I'll have a default result of negative one. We'll return if something was bad, but we'll override it with the AX result anyway. So into this, let's put in read. And then we'll pass in the same as the right system call. EBX will be the file descriptor that we're going to use, which is the offset into the open file table, just an array. So FD is an array index, effectively. ECX will be the buffer we're reading into, and D is the length and bytes of stuff going into that buffer. So not too bad. Getting the hang of it slowly. I think I have a stub, yeah, for read right here. So read bytes from an open file into a buffer, that's you know, simple enough. So I'm going to take probably the start of right, which I didn't remember where it was at. <laughs> I just wanted to, wanted to take basically the start of this. I'm going to copy just for anything not being useful there. Standard enter error, I guess we could read and that would be okay. So actually, I'll just take the top here where we're moving the input um, assembly register values into variable values, just overriding those. That's all I'm doing. I can save some time by going back through the jump list, and I can't really, because I never remember how to set that up correctly. Whatever. I'll just go back to here. <laughs> we'll put that to-do down there. So this is int32t, actually. Not quite an int32, just in case. Let me change that on right as well. This needs to be 32T, just in case. Okay. That time it worked. 
All right, so EBX is going to be the FD number. That will overwrite FD. ECX will be buffer. EDX will be length. Yes, that all looks all right. If it's an invalid FD, we'll just say, hey, that's an error. We'll return negative one. Otherwise, we have this bytes written value. This will be bytes read. We want to return the bytes actually read. So I'm going to do that at the end here. However, we get to this point, turn bytes actually read. We'll say number of bytes. So result, this will be bytes read. Just going into EAX. Okay, so the actual logic here, we need to get the FD number for the file that we're checking. And that can be in outer error. I suppose we could read standard out. That'd be kind of weird, but maybe they can somehow. That might be an error, actually. <laughs> Maybe read standard out would not be good. I don't know. I'll assume that the user is not going to call that right now, so I don't have to think about it. Uh, so what are we going to do for read that I had written down here? Use the argfd as an offset if it's zero invalid error. The offset's greater. We want to return zero. So we can't read past the end of a file or before the beginning of a file, but seek should handle that case. But we can't read past the end of the file. We just return zero as opposed to write where you could pad out to this new end of the file if the seek went past the end previously. Read doesn't work like that. We'll just return zero because there's no data there as of yet. Assuming we're reading you know, a good valid value, we can read length up until the end of the file. Uh, stopping at file length, yep. So we, I'll just call like a mem copy from the file table entries address, which is where the file is loaded to, from that open file table entry. The offset is where we're currently at in, into the file, so we'll read starting at that offset for length bytes into the input buffer, and if it reaches the file length, we'll stop at that point. We'll add our length if not at the end of the file, else it should be set to the end of the file, which is the size in bytes, and return the bytes actually read. I don't think there's, any, there's too many edge cases apart from that, so it is, on the whole, a bit simpler than write, which is thankful. I'm thankful for that. <laughs> Less to think about. So let's get that file table entry, open file table T. Again, I'll just have a pointer, OFT, duplicate code, but you know, eventually I could maybe abstract things better. But that'll be the open file table, which is a pointer I have up here, external. It's defined in the kernel to be at the head of the array of open file table entries. And FD is just going to be an, an array index. So we can just add that on the end to get to the right file there. So we'll just say again, we'll say git. File table entry for FD. And we can see if that is invalid or not. Check if the file is open and valid. We'll do that. So if the OFT, I know I was checking if, uh, what was I checking? If it had an address, really. If it doesn't have an address, the file's not open. Um, or if it, has an address that the file is loaded to, but it's not been opened yet. If the file is valid, then what was it? The reference count, yeah. If the reference count is zero, the file was previously open, but it was closed. And I'm not gonna read a closed file, so I'm not gonna do that. So that can be an error, or we can return zero bytes. I'll just say it's gonna be an error. So we'll say error file is not loaded to memory. Uh, we'll say invalid. We'll say FD is not loaded to memory invalid or file is not open anymore. That would be an error here. So we'll return a negative one. So assuming that's valid, we need to read from the current address, which would be the address plus the offset. So where the file is loaded to, the offset is an offset into the file from the starting address. So that's the current point in the file, which we're reading to. And that would be a buffer because address is a pointer. I'm not sure if I should like convert address to a number, add that, and then convert back to a pointer, or if this might just work. I guess we'll find out. Address is a UN8, right? So that should be okay. Yeah, so that's pointing to singular bytes. So according to pointer arithmetic, if offset is in bytes, which it is, it should end up as a pointer, you know, to the single byte at the right address we're gonna read from. Yeah, we wanna read into, into the buffer, just to make sure I remember my mem copy, which I don't. 
we're reading from the destination, or we're copying to the destination. Destination in this case would be the input buffer for read. We're reading into the buffer from the file. And for the length and bytes would be length. So we'll do that, but the length has to stop at the end of the file. So we probably need to get an actual length here. So let's say constant uint32. Let's say actual length. And we'll get the current file size in bytes, which is gonna be dereferencing the file's inode because that holds the size in bytes value. And we need to see which is greater, the size in bytes or the offset plus the length. So I can do that. Let's do this. Let's say if, I'll set this in a second. Let's just say if the size in bytes is greater than our offset value plus the length that was passed in, then we only want to read and stop at the size in bytes. So how would I do that? So only read up to file length in bytes. Do not read past end of file. Okay, else we want to do other stuff. If it's equal, that would be okay. This is only there, so I want to limit it here. I guess offset plus length minus size and bytes. Would that be it? Let's see. Let's say we're at offset 100. We'll say length is 50. The size of the file is 200. Then how would we get... Well, that would work. We would read 100 to 150, but what if we were at 150? Then they'd read till 200. What if we were at 180? They can't read 50 bytes. They'd only be able to read 20 bytes. So how do we get that 20 here? If the size in bytes is greater, we're fine. This needs to be if it's less than, I think. Yeah. <laughs> we need to get the total, and we need to subtract probably the current offset. And just do that. If I have this in my in my mind right, which I probably don't. <laughs> no, this is the size over here. I don't have my uh my table making hat on, so <laughs> let's say the length we want to read is 50 bytes. This would be offset. The current offset is at 180. We can only read 20 bytes. Because the size is 200. So I need to return 20 here. So how would I do that? I know I need to take the total size minus the offset in this case. We just disregard length, I suppose. If it's less than the offset plus the length. So I can do that. So actually, let me make this length to read. And I'm going to say that's going to be in here. We need to get the total size in bytes. And subtract the offset value. We can't read the whole length value. We can only read up to from the offset, so I'll do that. And if it's at the end of the file, this would be zero, which is fine. We'd return zero, I guess, and copy zero bytes. Does that work for a mem copy? Is that an edge case that I did? Zero less than length. Yeah, it would just return. Okay. And this would probably be bytes read in this case. We would do that. So I can do that. Bytes read. That's how many bytes we want to read. Yeah, so I have that there, okay. Otherwise, we can read the full length that we're saying. We can read the full length from the offsets. So that's not too bad, we can do that. And we would read the full length bytes, yeah. Else, let's do bytes read equals length. Can read up to full length in bytes. From file, we also need to update the offset according to the thing that was actually read. So that's why I have this as well. So I'm going to do this and we'll update file offset to bytes read from file. Won't be two, we'll say adding bytes read from file. Should be OFT offset plus equal length, but it wouldn't be length because that could be shortened up here. So we'll say bytes read, and then we'll return bytes read. That's not too bad. Copy from file to input buffer. There we go. Oh, 
Okay, I think that makes sense. So if the current file offset and the length we want to read is goes beyond the end of the file, we want to read up to the end of the file. So we subtract the offset from that, and we don't we don't regard length because that would be too much. This will be the actual length return, which is probably going to be less than this length. Else, if the offset plus the length is not well is equal or less than the full file size, then we can read up until that length. And then we'll copy for that. So let me not do length here. I'll do bytes read from the current address in the file into the input buffer. We'll copy and we'll add to it. So the offset was after the data that was read. Yeah, and then we'll return the number of bytes actually read. Yeah, I think that'll work. That seems to be all right. Not too bad. I'll try and add a test case for that in the kernel and we'll see if it works. Hopefully it does. Probably won't. Let me see if this compiles first off. Nothing ever compiles first off, of course, if ref count is zero equals. We need the comparison. Yeah, on both sides. <laughs> it's a double equals, not a single equals. Offset undeclared because it would be, what would it be? OFT offset. Plus length, that is correct. And it's undeclared down there as well. I said offset in my head and out loud. I didn't say OFT offset, so I didn't write it. And it only gives me the first error at a time, so I have to go through all these. Oh well. I could also just read my code and not do that. But the only other offset's there, and that one's correct, so. <laughs> that compiles, that's good. Okay, test. So forward declared in the kernel, we have test functions. Let's put a read test in there. <clears throat> Put a read test in there. We'll go to command run tests, which eventually I want to put this outside of the kernel, but right now we're just running all the tests in the kernel. I could do conditional compilation, like all this stuff only runs if I have uh, like a debug flag or something. I'm not doing that right now, so that's okay. We'll test the read syscall for, we'll just test read syscall on file. We'll say we have the test read function there. So at the bottom of the file, I'll make that as well. Um, I, I really could just call write and then test on the write thing, but yeah, I'll just do a separate file, I guess. Just take up more disk space, it's fine. We'll test read. We'll make a bunch of files. Later we'll have a delete function and we can delete the files as part of a test and that'll be fine, so. Right now, I don't really care too much. We'll have read test.txt, we'll open create, we'll open for reading. I probably should test the flags. I did not put the flags inside of the system calls. Yeah, that would be good. <laughs> uh, in FD's file table entry for read and write. Yeah, I need to do that, but I want to test that this works first, and then I'll go and add that. But let's see, cannot create file, otherwise let's make the hello world. We will write to it, otherwise we can't write to it, and we'll test. Read. So how'd I read to it? Well, I need another buffer that I read to. This is a string buffer. Let's call this, I don't, string buff, that's fine. Let's have a write buffer here, const, uh, maybe not const. We'll have a read, we'll have a read buffer. This will be, I mean, hello world, hello world is 14 bytes with the null. So I guess I'll do that there as well. And we'll see if we can read that data in. Let's say, if read from our FD, now we wanna read into the buffer. If we read into the read buffer from FD, given a length of, we'll just say, size of read buff, which is 14 bytes. So if that's not negative one, so if that's positive, so let's just say if it is greater than zero, yeah. So if that's less than one byte written, it would be zero or an error, and I wanna read at least one byte from here, so let's say it would be an error if we don't read at least one byte. I'll put in error here. So could not read file, 
Can I read file s into buffer? I'll just put that here. Okay. And we'll close it. And then I want to, I guess we have that there. We should test if we can read the text. So I'll make this like a temporary debugging thing. And we'll just print it out. So let's print F percent S. Let's say read test slash R slash N. These all start with that, don't they? Uh, I guess I'll put that at the front then. So what are we going to read? We're going to read the string that was in the read buffer with this percent %s here. Just to make sure, it should say hello world. <laughs> it should say this. Because that's what we wrote to the write, or the read test file here. So we should read that into the buffer and be able to read it. And that will tell me if that worked. So I guess I could string compare the buffer as well. That would be a good test here, yeah. So if string compare, or even string end compare, read buff compared to string buff for the size of string buff, well, for the size of read buff, we'll say. So a zero means they matched. So if it's not equal to zero, then we add an error. Let's say, Did not read file. Yeah, into buffer. Okay, yeah, I guess that'll work. Could not read file into buffer. Otherwise, we'll do the read test just in case, just to make doubly sure. Then we'll close the file and return. Okay, so we'll see if that read test worked. Unless I make a bunch of errors, which I always do. Buff is undeclared, that's true. What is this buff? I have string buff. A string buff and a read buff, and that's not confusing at all. Open takes a file path. That's an argument. One of read makes integer from pointer without a cast. Why does open take a file path? Oh, because I'm doing multiple. Yeah. Yeah, this doesn't like that. <laughs> Flags need to be ORed together. Obviously, I've called open recently in my life, so I remember how it works. I don't remember how it works at all. Read into the read buffer takes a character pointer. Oh, read takes the FD and then the buffer. Yeah, same as right. That's true. Because they have the same. <laughs> they have the same. What do you call this? Signature? The function signature is the same between read and write, so that's not confusing. But that's the only time I call read. Yeah. Okay, and that seemed to work. All right, so let's see what that looks like. Right now I don't have anything, so let's run the tests. Oh, could not read file into buffer. Ooh, that's not good. Test pass three of four. Did I make the file? I did make the read test file, it is 14. It could be an issue with me realizing how string compare works as well. Comparing the read to the right, size of read would be what, 14? It should be the same, because I wrote string buff. Let's see what happens if I comment this out. I'm curious what, what this equals. What does the string equal that's actually in that little buffer? Oh, it just says, could not read file into buffer. Nice. Could not read file. OK. So it aired before this point. <laughs> if read is less than 1, so are my are my returns from read okay? <laughs> are they not okay? That would mean I'm returning bytes read, which would mean that would be zero or negative, or I'm returning a negative. I'm passing the FD, that should be okay. Should have a reference count, it should have an address it's loaded to, so that would be here. The size in bytes, well, I wrote to it. Maybe the size and bytes wasn't updated. Well, it should have been updated from right. Which is up above close. Yeah. All 
I would think so. This is open, isn't it? So where do I update? Yeah, I update the size and bytes from the offset. So the size and bytes should not be zero, is what I'm trying to get at. Be less than the offset plus the length. What am I passing in for the length? Size of read buffer, which is 14. If it can't pass in 14, it should pass in 14 minus the offset. Well, I wrote to the file. That's true. No, that's true. I wrote to the file, so the offset would be at the end of the file. That is how read behaves. That's true. Since I wrote 14 bytes to the file, the offset would be already at the end, so it can't read past the end, so it's going to read zero bytes. Um, that's actually expected at this point, so let me do this. <laughs> We'll say read from end of file is what this test would be. Then we'll do the actual read here. We'll rewind by calling seek. I forgot how my stuff works. That's why I'm doing this. Just, you know, get back into the habit of knowing how these things work. So that's good. So if it was not negative one, we'll say if it's greater than zero. Error read from end of file should be should return zero. Uh, percent s should return zero. Okay, that's actually good. Let's seek to the beginning of the file. I don't have fseek, or else I could do like rewind, or I can make a rewind alias for the regular seek, which is lseek in Linux. But how do I do seek again? Fd fd offset and whence value. Let's do fd offset. We'll do zero, and we'll do seek set. We'll go back to the beginning of the file. Move back. Move back to start of file. Okay, now we should be able to read from the file. So I'm reading. <laughs> I need to call this again. This will be read from start of file. Another test. Read from start of file. All right. So now we'll do less than one. We'll say could. Uh, could not read from file into buffer. Okay. It should return 14, which is greater than or equal to one. So that should work. And then we'll test string compare. Check if buffer has correct file data. Could not read file into buffer. We'll say correctly. Okay, and then to test, we'll print that out. Okay. I forgot how stuff works. <laughs> it's like, of course. You're gonna return zero, you're reading from the end of the file. Okay, could not read into buffer correctly. That may be an off by one error as well. So I will check that. Trying to read 14 bytes when the thing is only like 13, because I think it stops at like the null byte. So let's see what happens. Yeah, let's see what happens when I comment that out. Does it print the string? It does print the string, hello world. Okay, so that is a off by one error. That is an off by one error. That is okay. This should be, size should be 14, but this is 14. But I didn't fill it with zeros. Should have been filled with zeros from the file, I guess. Uh, yeah, but I think that that would be true. If we do size of read buff minus one, right? That should return correct. Because we're not going to count the null byte for the strings. Oh, that really doesn't like that. Okay. That does make it. It is 14 bytes in length with the null byte. Really interesting. Does not like the string compare. Or is that read from file into buffer? I didn't pay attention. <laughs> it said correctly, right? Yeah, it said correctly. String buff and read buff. Um, 
Ah, this is always fun. All right. <laughs> I want to test what the size of these things are. Obviously, one might not be 14 or something. So, And size of returns like a big... It returns a size T. I don't have a size T in my thing, so I'm going to have to do like percent D or X or something somehow. That's that's fine. I'll do string buff and we'll have the read buff. I just want to compare the sizes here. Like what are we working with? So it's a D which is an int, but yeah, I'll just we'll do this. This is debugging, so it's fine. Drink buff and read buff, yeah, okay. You tell me I can't do that? Nope, I can do that. I can do that. They're both 14, okay, do I have an issue? <laughs> uh, minus one didn't even work, so really size of should work, but if it's not equal to zero. Do I have an issue with my string in compare? I should return zero if they're equal. Blank the zero returns zero, else return the data at string one. Undo that, minus the data at string two. So while length is zero, and they're equal, increment and decrement the length. So if length is 14, and they're both hello world, why would it, <clears throat> why would it not return equal? Hmm? I should make these like not 16 bit either, but. Like, is it an issue with my checking logic? Is it an issue with this comparison? I had an issue with string compare and string length before, but that's not it. So what am I actually getting? What am I actually getting from this string compare? Let's find out. That would be the next. The next thing to check here. Mm, negative 33, nice. No idea where that's coming from. <laughs> negative 33 on that, interesting. So string one, string two in length. They're both on the H. They go through hello world. They should both equal the same thing. This with the exclamation. Give it 14. So it should be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, which should be a null byte. I read it. I wrote it to the file. I read it from the file. 14 bytes with the null. I don't see why that would be negative 33. I guess I'm re am I reading one past the start? But I did the negative one test and that didn't work either. I know this is a very bad string in compare function. So it's probably an issue with like this function, right? <laughs> but I figured this would be, you know, null minus null, which is zero. Uh, I could check it against like uh, the full string which is not great, but I could do that instead of this. We could check, you know, that the same, that's the same common world, yep. That's not equal to zero. It really says that that's not correct. That's interesting. But when I print it, it is correct. So I'm not sure what's going on here. Size of read buffer is 14. With the null byte, that's 14. I don't see why that shouldn't return a zero, to be fair. I think it is correct. I just got my test wrong. I'll have to figure that out. Uh, find, find out why this returns true. Read buff does contain this string. Okay. So while my subconscious thinks over that, I'm gonna go and add logic to test the open flags like O read only and, and such within the interrupts, within the system calls. 
So I'm gonna do that. So inside of read, let's check against that. We have the FD if it's invalid. So let's do that here. Check open flags. Or check a file table. Check FD flags, I guess. Check the open flags. So we need to assume it has something for read. So if it's like write only, we don't want to do it. If it's not write only, then it's read or read write. So we can, we can deal with that. Those are 0, 1, and 2. So if 1 is true, that should be all right. So if it's O, write only, then we know that's not correct. FD is not open for reading. It's only open for writing. Only open for writing. Okay. And I'm going to add that similarly to syscall write up here. If it's with read only, it's only open for reading. If it's read write, then it's fine. But if it's read only, we cannot write to it. So that would also be bad here. OFT undeclared with read only. What did I call it then? Oh, I didn't get it till after this point. Yeah. <laughs> uh. Let's do that after here. We checked for the append flag, so we'll do this as well. Just move it after we got the OFT. That's fine. Let's make sure that's the same down here. Yep, we get the OFT pointer first, and then we'll check that. Okay. All right. Again, why does that test fail? I have no idea, but the other ones still work, and we still have the files here, so okay. That is all well and good. I'm, I want to figure out why that's why that's failing, but um, I mean I think read is okay. <laughs> I'm gonna leave it open on here until I figure out why that test fails for the string, but probably something really obvious I'm not doing right now. So put this here. Find why string test fails. It does not. String in compare to a static string literal correctly. Okay. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is, well, I need to remove that testing line. Let me do that, because that's a quick one. That was in the kernel. Let's ZZ out of there. It doesn't like it. Let's FG and then ZZ out of there. FG, then ZZ. I don't have any more. <laughs> Too many things open in the background. Okay, so I'm going to remove this testing line and also change printing everywhere instead of print types. I think I did that a while back. <laughs> That's just an empty to-do. I'm using printf everywhere in the kernel. That was an empty to-do. Okay. I just wanted to remove this line. So let me try and see if I can make like reading a regular text file before I do the graphic stuff. Let me see if I can fix some of this, like reading the text file again, maybe loading the editor again. With a pointer, we'll see. I at least want to try reading a text. If we write to it, like with write test, I should be able to read from that file from the run test function, right? Drag from the kernel, like in a command. So let's do that. Let's make like a type. Concatenate can concatenate between files and stuff. Uh, personally, I think type makes more sense. Let's do character. All these are UNAT, but they're technically characters. So I think for type reasons, I'm going to see if this breaks anything, but <laughs> does that break anything? It does not. Okay. So I'm going to make a command. I'm going to call it type similar to the Windows thing, because I think it makes more sense if we're saying we're typing a file out. Personally, I think that makes more sense. These things annoy me when they're not, uh, when they're not lined up. That just looks nicer. So I want to do that, but... <laughs> Oh, let's do that. Okay. So type will be type, and we'll type a, a file out. So let's say type out a text or other file to the screen. 
And we'll go and do that somewhere at the bottom. I'll go up wherever the current end is for our commands before we load a file and do everything. That's why I should structure my stuff better so that it's <laughs> more clearly what I'm doing. Abstracting the shell, well, our shell that we have, which is just checking what command we're running, doing everything. If I abstracted the shell to a separate program, it'd be a little cleaner in here. But even if I don't, it'd be cleaner if I like section parts off to say, hey, we're checking for a command in this function or this part, and we're checking for a file to run in this part. Right now, this is just straight line code and it's, it's not great navigating around. So that is in the back of my mind. I will try to do that soon. Let's see this, I'm not gonna test sound. Let's see, type out a file to screen. See, this string in compare works. It's just the other one that doesn't. I think this one works, I don't know, maybe it doesn't. I'm using string length and not size of, that might be an issue. Because it'd be 13 versus 14. So it could just be going to the end of the file and not doing, I don't know, it's, it's not working, so. <laughs> maybe if I changed it to do String length, that would work a little better. We can try that. So if we're doing type, how do we type the file? I'm assuming it's been opened, but what we could do is open the file and then close it. So let's open the file with argv0. Yeah, we'd have to do this anyway. Even if the file was open somewhere else, I want to write the whole thing to the screen. So I'm going to open the file at argv0 for, let's say, read only. And at the end, I'm going to close the file. I need an FD number. Let's say FD equals this. We'll close it. I'll do file cleanup. That'll be a constant. So how do we read it to the screen? I'm assuming we have a buffer that's big enough to hold it. But if we don't, we'd have to like chunk the data. So I need a buffer first off or else I don't have anything to read into. So let's say I have a character buffer called buff. How big is it gonna be? I'll say 256. And I'll try to read all of that. And if there's still data to read, I'll read 256 bytes at a time. So I have a little like read loop here. Yeah, let's do that. Let's say that's all zero to start off with. So I'm gonna read from FD into this buffer for the length of the buffer. We'll say size of buff. So let's say, let's say while reading that much data into the buffer, while that equals size of buff, so while we still have that much data to read, or maybe until it's not zero or something, but yeah, while it equals the size of the buffer, maybe less than or equal. No, because that could be down to zero. Yeah, okay. So I had to read a full 256 bytes until it's, doesn't equal, and if it doesn't equal the full size of the buffer, then we have read the last amount of data less than the size of the buffer. So that should be the, the end of the file at that point. Zero or otherwise. Yeah, so I, I think this will be okay. Hopefully, it might not be, but we'll see. <laughs> so while it is there, hopefully it's string data. I'm assuming it's a text file. I could put a check for that, of course, and only say we're gonna type out text files to screen. I could change later to print out binary representations and things, but right now, We'll just say check if text file, and we'll only allow that. So I don't have a string string function. That would be a use case for this, really. So I could add that as well. Let's do this in a bit, right? Let's just do this in a bit. Use string string for this. Checking for or I could just check the end. No, I could do this here, yeah, yeah, yeah. This isn't really great, but this is what I'm gonna do. <laughs> not, not great at all, really. So we have argv0, that's the name of the file. Well, this is the name of um, the command. I wanna check the name of the file, it's gonna be argv1, actually. There's no file named type, so. So I wanna compare that to .txt from the end of the file, which would be string length of argv1 very dangerous, and it would be minus four, effectively. One, two, three, four, hopefully. That might not be how I do it, but we can check. <laughs> so we'll say if that, 
argv minus four, this is all within string compare. If that's not equal to zero, that's not correct. So we'll say error file is not a text file. File percent s is not a text file. And I forget, do I have to begin these things with rn or not? I might, well, that ends with rn. We'll see how that looks. And the file would be argv1. And we'll just continue from here, not go on. Okay. Assuming it is a text file, we'll go on, we'll read into the buffer, and we'll print out what we read, which would be buff, which would be a string. And we'll keep doing that until it ends. And then we'll clean up and go on. So that seems simple enough, which means it probably will break spectacularly and not work at all. Let's find out. Probably won't work at all. I don't have any text files currently, so let's run the test to make them and deal with this saying it's fail, even though it's not really fail. But what that means is we have some stuff to look at. So let's say write test. That's a text file. It has 14 bytes. It should say hello world. So I do, if I do type write test.txt, it says it's not a text file. So I have an issue with my string compare function, <laughs> I think. I definitely have an issue with my string compare function because that, that should work and it's not. So. And just to make sure, we'll do this. If it says hello world, then we know it's right. Type write test.txt. Oh, it doesn't print anything. Actually, that's interesting. It should have written the data to disk, which is what I did in the last part. So I do have bugs here. So I'm going to have to find out what those bugs are. Because that should have read into the buffer. And it did not. Read from FD into the buffer for the full size of the buffer. If it equals the buffer, then read. If it doesn't equal the buffer, it will go on. So it might be less. Let's say while well, this is not equal to zero, because it only has 14. 14 is less than the size, so it would not have printed anything out. <laughs> so let's just say until it reads zero or while it's great, we'll say while it's greater than zero, then we'll do that. Okay. It's great. I have to run through all of the edge cases like in my brain as I'm doing it, which it ends up in not, not great, uh, not a great experience here. Okay. So we typed it. Listen, it made hello world. Okay. That proves that it does work. However, it didn't do the exclamation on the end. So. That might be an issue. Maybe that's the issue. It didn't do the exclamation. Interesting, because when I wrote the text here down in test write, I put an exclamation there. The, the bytes should be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. And the byte is 14 bytes in length, which should include the exclamation point. So that's interesting that that doesn't work. That is a bug. Look into bug where... Hello world does not print with exclamation point and write test.txt and probably other books. All right, <laughs> I'll do that. This does read it though. Technically, it's not great, but it, you know, it, it does. So what I'm actually going to do also and probably break other other printing and other things with um taking input, when this prompt prints out, we're good, right? When I press enter and we go on to tokenize, which is down here, I'm going to put a new line. So a new line is automatically printed. So we do cursor off. I'm gonna print a new line here. <laughs> Cause that's been annoying me for a while that I have to automatically do that or not automatically, but it's not done every time I do this. So that prints a new line, which is not great. Cause this, when it says this text, it's also a new line. So all of these things now have an extra new line, but if I do something like, like that, and then we do type again with write test.txt, it prints it on its own line and then I'll probably need another new line. So there's, there's a way to do this, set up new lines so that it looks better. But I'm gonna research what the 
what the issue is. I guess I'll take that out because <laughs> the other ones have that there. I want to add that back in though. Add automatic new line here after prompt. Okay, but I'm going to research what that string compare issue is and I'll try to I'll try to get back when I figure that out. So, thanks for watching so far. All right, yeah, I find <laughs> I found out my issues it's because I don't know how to do C properly when I'm trying to talk and record at the same time as well as every other time I try to program it doesn't work. But uh yeah, so <laughs> Let's go back down to the test. So if I do if I do string length for the length to check against this string, it does return true. It is compared correctly, but it doesn't work if I do size of read buffer in this because I don't remember zero based versus one based indexing. And yes, yeah, so this would be zero, one, two, well, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. They're not gonna match on the null because they go until the strings are still you know, the pointers are still valid and everything. And at null, they're not really going to be valid anymore. It could be whatever. And trying to read data at zero is not going to be correct. So if I return the data <laughs> at this null value that's implicitly there, that's going to be whatever's there compared to whatever's at the other one. And it's, yeah, anyway. There's issues in the string compare that I should handle. But if I actually do for the length of the string that I'm supposed to, only the 13 bytes here, that, that does return correctly. Um, and also, yeah, I don't know how to do C, so <laughs> I was I was meaning to compare to the end of the file, the end of the string that we pass in for the file name. I was I wanted to compare to the end of that string minus four bytes to check for the four bytes dot txt, and this checks for the length of the string length of the file name minus four, which write test dot txt is thirteen. This would have checked nine bytes. This is a lot bigger than nine bytes, and this file name doesn't start with dot txt. So that would never have returned true because I just don't know what I'm doing. But OK, if I take the start of the file name, I add on the length of the string, which for write test dot text is going to be 13. Yeah, Vim tells me that's 13 bytes. Minus four, which would be nine, but it would take the pointer at the start of the name. It'd go to the end of the string, it'd back up four bytes, and then it would check if those four bytes are equal to TXT here by doing four. So. That's what I meant to do, <laughs> to check for the ending.txt. And I don't know how to do C and think and talk at the same time. So yeah, this way it does recognize it as a text file. I'll show that in a second. Just I also put some new lines here to fix printing a little bit before and after printing the thing. It still doesn't print with the exclamation, but I did want to show that um, it does work. So if I do run tests, I get OKs on all those. It makes the file. If I do type type for write or read, but I'll do write test.txt, it says hello world. So I guess it may be in my printf as well. I'm not including the last byte. That could be an issue in printf if the other things are working. So I might consider that. That could be an issue. But assuming it's not because I am calling printf and the buffer does have the thing. I can try to find that real quick. I mean, we can make sure it's not in the terminal right, which it shouldn't be. We don't have an escape sequence. Um, I did do some other stuff for, for graphics for fixing issues, but I wanted to go over that when I had more time. So <laughs> I'll go over that in a second, but I was just debugging to make sure. But it shouldn't. It should print until the end of the string. Like I don't have an issue with with this. It's checking if we're not at the null byte, keep going on. And if we are not, we'll print the character out. So I think it's just in printf, which would make sense. There's my terrible, terrible C standard int that I realized I didn't press standard I/O. I typed standard int. So what would be the issue here if I'm typing just a string? Am I not getting the last character? I'm doing format i not equal to zero. i plus plus. We have a format i string. If we're a little state machine here, length plus plus equals c. That should be okay. I'm just doing i plus plus by these things. If it's a percent s, I mean we're going to print out. 
As long as s is still the string, it goes into the right buffer for the current length. Length may be off by one here. Maybe that's the issue. I'll have to research this a little bit further. I do end with a null regardless here. I write it standard out. That ultimately goes to terminal right because that's going to be a one. Then we're going to free the buffer. So I may be off by one with the length for some of these. Like this has plus plus equals s plus plus. That should be okay, but it's not. It's not, so. <laughs> this is not printing the exclamation at the end, which is interesting. I don't know. Yeah, I'll have to research that further, but my test completed. Like, that's what I wanted to check, so. My test completed for, uh, for read, the read test. This has an exclamation. So I know the ex the exclamation was red, it's just not printing. So I'm gonna debug printf, but I'll, I'll get to that at the start of the next video, probably. I did that to do. And as well as the next video, I will try to, since text is doing this, I'll, I'll debug printf. This I did. And the read syscall subsequently I did. So I'm gonna say that's done. I'll debug printf. Sometimes does not print final byte in strings, e.g. Hello world only prints hello world. No exclamation. Okay. But if I figure that out, then I'll go and change how files are loaded and we'll see if we can get the calculator and the editor to work again. I might change the editor a little bit to use open and see if we can load that into a buffer if there's minimal changes needed there. If not, then I'll leave further editor changes to a little bit later. But I'll go over that and I'll fix the graphics modes again for lower bits per pixel values in between 8 and 32. And then I might go on to change syscalls and do some other stuff. I guess the next, if, if those aren't interesting, the next interesting thing I do would be maybe make or change directory commands and screen scroll back and changing how the file system's laid out when it's built and compiled and some other directory and other things, changing printf and stuff. So I'll get to these things next. Hopefully that sounds all right. And yeah, so thanks for watching. I do appreciate it. Of course, I always do. Hopefully I sound like I do. I, I do. So I'll see you then. And, you know, as always, cheers.